Hello, I'm Dr. Harper. This video is on operations management. It is Memo 4, Quantity Discount Inventory Lecture. So let's bring up the memo. Uh, the inventory manager of the warehouse for DD DuraWear Tire has typically ordered a quantity of 780 each time an order is needed for one of their popular tires to take advantage of the discount provided by the supplier and save the company money. The following discount schedule has just been has, has just been received, reflecting recent changes in the discount percentages. The manager still maintains an order of 780 as the best, since it will save the company the most money because of the quantity discount. And I can see what he says here is 780. You'll have a 10% discount on the acquisition cost. In other words, if you buy just uh, anywhere from zero to 389 tires, you pay 30 full price of 32 dollars. But if you buy a quantity between 390 and 779, you can buy it at a 5% discount and only pay $30.40. But if you buy 780, you get a 10% discount and pay 2880 per tire. So I can see what he says that you do save the company quite a bit of money. Assume this tire is expected to have a constant demand of 1560 tires over the next year, and the inventory carrying cost is determined as a percentage of the acquisition cost as is usual for quantity discount problems. Uh, although they do not know the unit ordering cost or unit carrying cost per dollar of inventory, they have reported a total ordering cost of $50 and a total carrying cost of $7,605 for last year with a lot size of 780 and an acquisition cost of 2880. So last year when they paid that, they knew that their total ordering cost over the year was 50, total carrying cost over the year was 7,605. The unit cost will apply to next year since no significant changes in operations has happened. Uh, the president of the company would like to know if the manager is correct in his reasoning, if the manager is correct in his reasoning, let me underline that, or whether another quantity might be better and why. And so what the president is asking is, is the manager correct in his reasoning that this saves the most money? That's the question that needs to be answered. The second is, is there another quantity that's better than 780 and why is it better? So notice, uh, nowhere in here does it talk about EOQ. Uh, but EOQ can be used and the concepts can be used to answer these questions, but they're not asking for EOQ. The president, Ms. Dawn Deertracker, not the manager, has contacted us to provide her this information to be presented at the next planning meeting. Since she has been newly appointed to make changes in the company and the manager has historically set the inventory policies, she has demonstrated trust in our ability to provide a quality analysis by retaining us as one of her first consulting projects in inventory. And prepare a response memo to the president, to the president that adequately addresses her requests, the, the reasoning of the manager and another quantity that might be better and why, with content suitable for use to be useful in their planning meeting. Address the reasoning, notice in their planning, suitable to be useful in their planning meeting. Let me underline that. So this is not telling someone how you solved a problem. This is telling someone your solution in such a way that it's useful for them for planning. Address the reasoning given by the manager in your response memo. Prepare a separate technical memo to me outlining the details of your analysis. Prepare a video based on a PowerPoint for the president to present to her planning committee that would satisfy her request and be acceptable to her, her manager, and the members of the planning committee. So notice what this is saying. This, this video is for the president to present at the planning meeting that she would be acceptable for her, the manager, so they don't, they're not necessarily agreeing on things, the planning committee, who may not really agree. So it's really a white paper 
white paper type of a report and a white paper type of presentation say, here's the analysis, here's the thinking, and here's order quantities that you can consider. And there is really no recommendation or decision. It's really analysis. Okay, so let's work this problem. Uh, so first of all, let's take these numbers right here. Uh, control C, let's bring up Excel. And there we go. Uh, let's come down here a ways and put it right in here. Uh, and there it is. Okay, and uh, let's see here. Uh, this right here is going to be the quantity. Uh, this is the discount. And these are the cost. Okay. Uh, now, down here a ways, let's come down here and let's start putting in the detail here. Let me make this large so we can see what's going on here. Uh, that's that's better. There we go. Okay, first of all, our uh, demand right here is 1560. Our demand equals 1560 oh, over the next year. Uh, and then the ordering cost, we don't know exactly what the costs are. Let's bring this up here. Uh, but we do know the uh, the total ordering cost is $50. So the TOC equals $50. Okay. Uh, the TCC over the year is 7605 Okay. Uh, with a lot size of uh, 780 and acquisition cost of 2880. Uh, That's this uh, this right here. Okay. Good. Uh, we're on a roll here. And I think that's pretty much all we need. Yeah, so let's uh, full screen this. And let's just start uh, moving with this one. Okay. Let's enlarge this so we can see what we're doing here. There we go. Okay. Now then right here uh, for our quantity, uh, this is a Q equals 780. In other words, uh, the uh, 780 is what they ordered. But then for this, for Q equals 780, then the ordering cost equals, well, 780, uh, 2 times 780 is 1560. So really, the frequency equals uh, demand divided by the Q is 2. And so the ordering cost, uh, TOC, which is equal to F times C sub O. So therefore, C sub O equals TOC divided by F, right? And so my ordering cost is simply will equal my total ordering cost divided by 2. Okay? Or this divided by 2. Do it that way. And this is just our workspace there. So we're going to need that. Uh, what about our carrying cost? Again, 780, right? But then again, our, uh, our uh, uh, Q over 2 times I times C is the actual uh, uh, equation for the total carrying cost, right? So here we would want our I because we do know what Q is. Q is 780. divided by 2 times I. Don't know what that is. We're going to solve for that. Okay. Uh, times our C, which is 28.8. Okay. So that right there, times I, equals TCC. Right? So TCC simply equals this, uh, divided by this, and we have 667. And there we go. Whoops. So this is going to be um, s equals this divided by 
let me just go ahead and put all these in. Okay, it's going to be this divided by 2 times that. So they're all there. Okay, now I can now I can erase this. This is our workspace. Don't need that anymore. Uh, so now we're going to need these two right here. Is what we're going to be needing here. Let me just box this in. Okay. Um, but then these right here, uh, let's bold these because this we're going to be using. Right? Okay, now let's come up here. And remember, the way we solve uh, quantity discount problems is one, we have our initial uh, Q. Right? The initial Q is simply the EOQ. You know, let me uh, take all of these. These are from uh, Times New Roman. Let's just change these to Arial. They're all, all the same. Here we go. Uh, initial Q equals the square root of 2 times our demand, which is 1560. Fix that. Times our ordering cost, which is 25. Fix that. Divided by, open parenthesis, our carrying cost, which is 60, well, that's 67% on the dollar. Fix that times our acquisition cost, item cost, which is that right there. Boom. In other words, let's go ahead and do this. And there it is. Actually, let me do it this way. Just so we can see it, so you can see it. There we go. So we have the square root of 2 times our demand, which is this, blue, times our ordering cost, which is this, red, divided by our carrying cost, which is the carrying cost I, carrying cost per item per dollar, which is purple, times our dollar amount, which is $32. Now that 32 is not fixed, so this will carry down. So let's do it. Bing, bing, and there they are. So let's center these back. So the second is going to be the uh, uh, feasible, feasible Q, correct? Okay, now 60, is it in this range? Yes, it is, so therefore 60 is feasible. Now 61 is not in this range, so the one in this range closest to 60, 1.5587 is 390. There it is. And then 63.2 is 780. And there's our feasible Q. Okay, number three is get our total. Our total total cost. Okay. Uh, now this one, remember the total cost. Let's just put it this way. Uh, the total cost. Okay, which is going to be the total inventory, ordering cost, carrying cost, acquisition cost. So uh, uh, let's do each of them separately. Uh, right here, uh, let's do, um, first of all, the total ordering cost. Okay, we have our feasible, feasible uh, Q right here. Uh, we'll see. We'll have our item uh, average. We'll have our uh, item cost. We'll need that. Uh, we'll need our demand, our frequency, then the ordering cost, and then the total ordering cost. Okay. So all of it's based on feasible Q. So this is equal our feasible Q here. Copy this down. Boom, boom. Item cost is going to be, um, where's it at? Right here. And copy this down. Instead of moving this around here, let me reduce this a little bit so I don't have to move it around so much. Get dizzy here. Uh, there we go. One more. There we go. Okay, that's good for now. Okay. And then um, our demand. Well, that's equal to this. Now our frequency. Now remember our frequency equals uh, uh, D over Q, right? It's going to be um, D divided by our Q. And then copy that down. 
So now our ordering cost is uh, our C sub O then is given to be this. And ordering cost simply is our frequency times our unit ordering cost and copy that down. And there they are. Boom, boom, boom. So we got these. So let's box these in because that's going to, we're going to use these in a minute. So that's good. There we go. Okay, now let's see what's next. Let's do car total carrying cost. Next. Okay, we want our feasible Q, feasible Q. Uh, an average inventory this time because we're doing carrying cost, right? Item cost again. Okay. Uh, and then this time our I, which we will have. But then we have our carrying cost, which is I times C. So we'll get that, and then finally we get our total carrying cost. Okay. Again, our feasible Q. Come up up here. Feasible Q is right here. Boom, boom. Average inventory simply equals this divided by 2. And there's our average inventory. Yay. Our, our item cost, we have this up here, which is right here, 32. And copy this down. There you go. Our I is given to be this right here. And notice I'm using all of the significant figures. Don't round. Do not round. Uh, C sub C, then, the cost per item equals the cost per dollar times the dollar amount, which is the item cost. And copy this down. There we go. Okay. And then the total carrying cost simply equals our uh, average inventory times our carrying cost per item. And there they are. Okay. So that's good. Uh, let's just round this up just to the dollar. That's good enough. But we're keeping all the significant figures, so I'm just representing it to the dollar. All the significant figures are in there. Okay, and that's going to be the total carrying cost. Uh, but there's one more. Remember, the total cost equals total ordering cost, total carrying cost, and then the total total acquisition cost. Okay, so here all we need is our D, we need our item cost, and then the total acquisition cost. And there we go. Our D, we know what that is, that's going to be uh, right here at 1560. Item cost equals uh, this right here, 32 again. Copy this down. Boom, boom. And really, the total acquisition cost is just very simply um, uh, the demand times how much each of those cost. Over the, uh, over the year. There you go. So now over here, we'll have our total cost. Let me do it here box this in to be consistent and here we have our total cost to be consistent and that's going to be um, let's go ahead and put this in our total ordering cost Total carrying cost, total acquisition cost, just so we can see them, because that's going to be helpful to us. Okay, and then down here is going to be our total cost. Total ordering cost is going to be equal to this. Total carrying cost is going to be here. Total acquisition cost is going to be here. And then we'll just copy this down. Total Total cost equals this plus this plus this, all three of them. And there's our total cost right there. Again, we don't, let's just round it to the dollar. Okay, and there's um, 
box this in, bold it. We'll box all this in now just to format it here to be complete. And uh, let's take this right here, copy it. Actually, it's copy. Let's put it up here. Equals that, and then just copy it down like that. So it's all tied together. Okay, now four is the, uh, the minimum cost. Well, the minimum cost you can see here is 51. Uh, let me just put it over here. The feasible queue right here. Uh, bold it and box it. 51220, 515, 525. And so 60, uh, lot size of 60 with a total a cost of 51,220 is the minimum cost. Uh, but that's not really what they asked for. They said, yeah, well, is this the cheapest? No, it's not. Actually, 390 is a little cheaper. And 60 is even cheaper yet. Okay, and so why? Why is it that way? Well, even though, notice the acquisition cost, yes, that is the minimum. Okay, actually, let me do this. If this number equals the minimum of all these three numbers, then say, then put in, um, let me just say minimum. Otherwise, blank. And we can see there's a minimum right there. Let me put the same thing up here. Put the same thing here and put the same thing here. If this equals a minimum of all three of these, one, two, three, then say minimum, otherwise blank. Oh, forgot, forgot, forgot that. So that's a minimum for the ordering cost. Now what about this? If this equals the minimum of all of these, one, two, three, F4, close parenthesis, then say minimum, otherwise blank. And this time, this is a minimum, okay? See where the minimums are, okay? And let me just put these in here. There's the minimum. Again, let's uh, bring this down to dollars. Uh, that's a minimum. And, uh, and then uh, this is a minimum. So the acquisition cost is a minimum, and the ordering cost is the ordering cost is a minimum, but the carrying cost, the lower one, is a minimum. But notice what happens here. Uh, now we can see it. Now notice this is a minimum. These are minimum for the uh, for the lowest category. For these categories. Put these in here. In here and in here. So notice the lowest category, uh, the 780 is is that's the lowest and that's the lowest. But then this right here is the lowest for the uh, for all of them. So notice the differences between 50, 100, and 650, or 44 to 47 to 49. Is not even close to the difference of 650 to 4,000 to 7,000. So the idea here is that what we have is that we have a lot of um, uh, the carrying cost is pretty expensive. And the carrying cost is you need to watch the carrying cost more than just 
the discounted cost here. The discounted cost, that's good, that's fine, but then the carrying cost is so large, here's your carrying cost is so large, that it's going to really dominate your ordering uh, strategy. So those are kind of things that we need to, to mention and talk about. Uh, I think another thing too, that's important, yeah, let's take the feasible queue down here again. So let's put another row in here. Uh, let's take this uh, feasible queue. Let's do one more thing. And there they are. Okay, that's for the categories. Uh, and then let's let's do the frequencies. Uh, here's the frequencies. And copy these down. And then let's do the average inventory. It's down here. There it is. And then copy this down. Here's another thing I want to point out that uh, uh, this is looking at the costs. Notice this is the costs. Okay. Now you can say cost is only one criteria. But this right here, let's box this in and let's look at this for a minute. What we're seeing here, though, is the uh, warehouse and the purchasing department, the, the, uh, uh, the uh, buyers, the purchasing department. So right now, here's where they're sitting. So the buyers that say, oh, yeah, we just oh, every six months we place an order of 780 uh, and we're fine. OK, that's easy. And so you say, well, you know, 60 is the minimum cost, so therefore, uh, you should be ordering 60. It says, wait a minute. So you're telling, if you if you recommend, if we recommend 60, then we're telling them to order 26 times a year. It's kind of like, oh, yeah, we do two assignments or two memo assignments, and maybe we should do 20 memo assignments. It says, wait a minute. The order of magnitude of work in the ordering department is, is 10 times more, over 10 times more. Uh, we should think rethink that. But what about our what about a warehouse over here? Well, we have three hundred ninety dollars worth of inventory in here on the average. Uh, uh, but now, if we go to sixty, we're only going to have thirty. Well, yeah, we have thirty. It's easier to handle, but we're going to handling be handling that twenty six times a year, every two weeks. We're receiving an order of thirty and putting it, and even thirty and putting it, and thirty and putting it. Yeah, it's going to save money. But only in storage. The carrying cost might be prohibitive because we're, we're, we're moving it so much. It's not normal. It's not normal. And so going from 780 down to 60 might be the best economically. It may not be the best operationally. It's going to increase the, the amount of work for the purchasing department. It's going to lower... It's going to lower the amount of inventory you're handling, but you're handling it much, much more frequently. And so there's there's some positive and negatives on the operation side. Now let's look at 390. A 390 here, going from two to four every six months to every three months, that's not that bad. Going with 390 to 195, again, that's not that bad. That's that's just half as much, and we're only doing it every quarter. So the operations here and the cost here, but oh, what about the cost though? Well, let's see. Uh, let's see what the differences are. The difference here between this and this is $318 over a year. This is $1,000, okay? But then the difference is here is $1,000. So, you know, we could save $1,000 here. Uh, here we could save $318. But the difference, is the, but the difference between uh, moving to here and moving to here, this difference here is $1,000. Now, this $1,000 is over an entire year. So the question is this. Yes, we can save we can save the company thirteen hundred dollars, one thousand three hundred sixty-three dollars, 
by going to here, but making them work a lot harder. Or we can go to here and uh, and save, uh, let's see here. Let's do it this way. This minus this, there we go. Uh, save 1,045. Uh, going going from here to here is saving 13. Going from here to here is saving 1,000. We can save $1,000, but we don't have to work that much. Uh, you know, work a little bit more here, a little bit less here. And so the actual disruption to operations might be a lot less. Uh, and the, what's the difference between these two? The difference is like $300. So, uh, to put this in perspective, go to everybody in the warehouse, the material managing people, go to everyone in the purchasing department, all the buyers, say, hey, do you want to increase the amount of work by 10 times? Or do you just want to increase it just slightly? Uh, and the difference between those two is just $300 a year. That's the difference between those two decisions. He says, hey, I'll give you $300 right now. I don't want to work that hard. I'll, I'll give you the three. I'll give you $400 right now. I don't want to work that hard. And so the small amount of money at, at this point, uh, looking at the disruption of operations. So in other words, these numbers, be careful that you don't let numbers drive your company. The numbers are just a picture of reality. Think of everything that's not here. Think of the people behind uh, all of this; these numbers, because they represent something else, and that what they're representing is reality. And there's where you make decisions. People make decisions. Numbers should not make decisions for the people. And that's why you need people doing operations that know operations. Okay, so make sure uh, that you address uh, the reasoning of the manager. Uh, but also do it in such a way that it satisfies her request and be acceptable to her, acceptable to her manager and the members of the planning committee. Well, to her, it's going to be accurate. Her manager is say, well, he did. He is saving the company money. But there's other things that could save the company money even more, that, that save the company even more money. So I'm sure the manager would be more than happy to consider even more because he really is has the company's best interest at heart. And then members of the planning committee, I don't know, maybe we're talking about more of a holistic uh, around view of not only the money uh, or ordering, uh, but operations. And so we're thinking not only of the money, but also the people. And so however you want to do it, uh, that's going to be valuable. And also the president, Ms. De Deer, Don Deer Tracker, not the manager because she's relatively new. So as, as helpful as we can be here, we'll help the president and also we'll help the manager and you can bring them together. So because when you bring people together, you're gonna to be productive. You divide people, it's not a good thing to do. Uh, you're gonna be, it, it uh, undermines productivity. So food for thought, uh, so here's, uh, that's all I have for this memo. I hope this helps. Uh, between now and now the next time I see you, uh, stay uh, safe and take care.